Have you got a bit complacent when it comes to using your Google Calendar, so you're just creating events or meetings without really thinking about what you're doing? Well, I'm going to show you things you need to know about your Google Calendar that you might not have come across before, or maybe you have, but you've just forgotten about them, in which case I'm here to remind you. So let's get started. So I'm going to start off with the basics, which are the settings. Now, I usually recommend that everybody goes into the settings, no matter what you're using, just to make sure that you get it exactly how you want it working for you. So when you're in your calendar, click on the letter S, which is the keyboard shortcut for settings, or click on the gear icon in the top right corner here, and then click on settings. So the first thing I want to show you is if you constantly change the length of your events in your calendar. Um, so for example, when you create an event, if it automatically sets it as 60 minutes long, and the first thing you do is shorten that to 30 minutes, then you need to go into your settings and change the default event length, basically. So to do that, you click on event settings down here on the left hand side. And then the very top one says default duration and it's set currently mine is set for 30 minutes. If I want to change that to 15 minutes, I can extend it to 120 minutes if I want to. So the first thing you need to do is just go into your settings there and change the event length to suit your own particular meetings. And also one thing to point out is that any changes you make in your settings, they're automatically saved. So all you need to do once you're happy is click on the back arrow here in the top left corner and it will take you back to your calendar. So press the letter S to go back into your calendar settings. And the next thing I want to show you is your view options. So click on view options down the left hand side here. And this is where all the little gems are hidden. So there are two in particular that I want to show you today. The first one is if you don't need to see your weekends in your calendar, then hide them. And, all to do, and to do that, all you need to do is just uncheck the box here where it says show weekends. And if we now go back into your calendar, you can see my calendar is now Monday to Friday and Saturdays and Sundays are hidden. So I'm going to go back into the settings, go down to view options. And I actually, I'm going to tick show weekends because I actually prefer my weekends to be shown on my calendar. The second thing I want to show you is if you find it hard to see the difference between previous events and current events, then you need to reduce the brightness of past events here. So tick this box and that means that, um, especially if you color code your events, it means that the colors will be dimmer. They'll be, they'll be slightly faded than the current events. So if I just untick this, so you can see what it looks like without it work, without it being switched on. If I go to a previous, um, week in July here, you can see all of these colors are bright and vibrant. If I go back into my settings, go to view options, and now if I check the box, reduce the brightness of past events, go back into my calendar, and you can see straight away all these events here are now faded. The colors are dimmed. So that's personal preference. I just find it a lot easier to spot events that have happened in the past if the colors are slightly faded. So I'm back in the settings. I'm back in the view options where we just were. And for the next tip, we're going to stay with these options and scroll down until you see a box that says start week on. So I recently had a conversation with a coach whose calendar was defaulted to start on a Sunday and she found it really confusing, but she didn't realize that you could actually change this. So all you need to do is click on this drop down arrow and you can start your week on a Saturday, Sunday or Monday, whichever you prefer. It obviously depends on your working week. So I'm going to keep mine as Monday. The final thing I want to show you in your settings is really handy if you need a reminder of what your schedule looks like at the beginning of every day. So you can get Google to send you an email every day of your schedule for that particular day. So the previous tips have been for the general settings. Um, so when you go into your settings, you can see here it says general. For this particular one, you need to go into the settings for your own calendar. So still go into your settings page where we are now and go down to where it says settings for my calendars, choose the calendar that you want this setting to work for, click on there, and then scroll down to other notifications. And you can see this is where you set all your notifications. Um, and there's one called daily agenda here. 
and you can set it to email or none. So if you want the agenda to be emailed to you every single morning, then just make sure that that says email. And then when you're, once you're done, click on the back arrow here to get back into your calendar. So you will now receive an email at around six o'clock in the morning listing your agenda for that particular day. Now, if your Gmail is set to the default inbox layout, then the emails appear in your updates category tab across the top. And this is what the email looks like. Now, obviously this particular calendar, I'd only got one thing scheduled in, but if you've got like lots of meetings set for that particular day, then they'll all be listed for you. So it's just a real handy reminder to you. Um, if you're not quite sure what you've got on every single day, you get this email and it's just so much easier to see what you've got on without having to go into your calendar. And if you want to turn it off at any time, then you simply go back into your settings, go down to the settings for that particular calendar, go to other notifications, go to J daily agenda and turn that to none. And that's it, job done. So moving on and then I want to talk about shortcuts. So the first one I want to show you is how to quickly create a new event without actually being in your calendar. So whatever browser you're using, open up a new tab in your browser and simply type in cal.new. Press return and this opens up a brand new event for you to then put in the details. Now it automatically uses the whatever Google account you're currently logged into. So make sure you're logged into the correct one before you do this. But it's pretty handy to know, right? So I've already mentioned that pressing the letter S is the keyboard shortcut to take you to your settings. So here are a few more shortcuts that you that will help save you a little bit of time. Press the letter T and that will take you to today. You then have all the other different view options. So D takes you to day view, W takes you to weekly view, M is monthly view, Y is yearly view, and A is the view of your schedule. So this shows seven working days, so it doesn't show week weekends, and you can choose it to go from any date within your calendar. So I'm just gonna go back to uh, weekly view. The final keyboard shortcut is X, which is your custom view. Now to set this up, you need to go back into your settings. So click on S for your settings, go to view options, and then down here, you've got one that says set custom view. So I've got mine currently set to two weeks, but you can click on here and choose two days, three days, four days, and so on, right the way up to four weeks. So if I just go back, and you can see this is set for two weeks. So whatever you set it in your settings, when you press X, that's the custom view that you will see. So I'm just gonna go back to weekly view again. Another shortcut I just will quickly want to show you is using this mini calendar here over on the left-hand side. You can click and drag your mouse. So if we say from Thursday to Tuesday, you click and drag your mouse over the dates that you want to see and your calendar changes to those dates. So to remove this, just press the keyboard shortcut of the view that you want to see. So for example, W for weekly view, and it now goes back to the normal weekly view. And the final shortcut is to show and hide weekends. So earlier on, I showed you how to do that in your settings. Well, there is another quick way of doing it. And all you need to do is click on this drop down here for the view options here. And you've got a selection here for show weekends and you just uncheck that box and it will hide the weekends. If you want them back again, you can click on here and just tick next to where it says show weekends and job done. Now, one thing I love about using Google Workspace is the way that all the apps just get along with each other and the different types of workflows that you can have. So I'm gonna show you three ways that your calendar can work with Gmail, Tasks, and Google Docs. Now there are several ways that your calendar works with your Gmail, but I'm just going to show you one way and that's to create an event from within your Gmail itself. So let's say you've got an email where you've been trying to set up a meeting and the date and time have now been confirmed. When you're in the email, so I've got an email here, when you're in this email, click on the three dots at the top of the page here and then click on create event. This opens up a new event in your calendar. So you can see that the event title takes the actual subject line of the email. So I'm just going to take away the question mark there and leave that as is. The actual emails are automatically included in the description box here. Anybody who's included on the emails are automatically added as guests to the event. So just make sure to check that that's correct, just in case anybody that was CC'd in the emails, if they don't need to be included in the meeting, then just remove them as a guest. And then all you need to do is set the correct date and time. So let's just put that as there and then change the notifications or delete the notification if you don't need it and click save. 
it will ask you if you want to send invites to the actual um to the guests in the meeting so click yes or no for that and that's it job done so we're going to use that meeting as an example for my next tip which is if you need to share a file with the with the attendees you can do it without actually being in your calendar so go into your drive and locate the file that you want to share with the attendees now there's a few different ways of sharing the file. You can either hover over the file name here and use the icon that appears over on the right hand side to share. When you hover over it, it says share. Or you can right click on the file name and then go to share that way. Alternatively, if you're actually in the file itself, so if I just open up this file, you simply click on the share button at the top of the page here. So instead of typing in the name of the person you want to share it with, you type in the name of the meeting itself. So the meeting was called call to discuss start typing it in and it will automatically appear here so you just click on there and you can see it's added in the people who are actually guests of the meeting once you're happy with the guests included here go into the sharing permissions and you can select whether you want them to be viewer commenter or editor so that's for this particular file that's going to be shared in the meeting if you want to include the file as an attachment in the actual calendar invite then check the box here where it says attached to calendar event. And then once you're happy with everything, click on send. Now, if we go back into this calendar event, which is here, you can see if you scroll down, you can see that there is now an attachment here, which is the document that we've just shared. And if you open up the event itself, you can see it's included in the description at the very top here. Now, one thing to note is that you must be the owner or the editor of the file before you can share it and job done. So the final tip I want to share with you is using your calendar with tasks. So Google Tasks is a simple task management system. It's available to both free and paid accounts. If you've never used it before, then you might like to check out my beginner guide where I show you step by step how to use it. So whenever you've added a date to a task, it will appear in your calendar. You just need to make sure that you've got the tasks calendar here over on the left hand side. You just need to make sure that that is ticked and the tasks will appear in the calendar for those tasks that you've actually put into a date, a deadline date on. So for example, I've got one here that you can see at the top. It's actually showing as an all day event because I've not selected a time for the deadline. I've just put a date in there. So if you click into this task in your calendar, you can actually edit this task from within your calendar without needing to go into your tasks. Click once on the task and before you go in to edit it, if you've actually completed the task, then you can mark completed down here and it will also mark it as completed on your tasks page. Now you can see that the event is now being crossed out here on my calendar. There is an option to hide completed tasks from your calendar. So what you need to do is click on this view option box here in the top right corner and show completed tasks. Just uncheck that and it now disappears from your task um, calendar. If you want it back on, then just tick next to where it says it and it comes back. If you want to access your tasks page, then you do this from within your calendar as well. You'll see that there's two icons in the top right corner, the calendar icon and there's also a switch to tasks button here as well. And all you need to do is click on there and it shows you your full tasks page. And to get back into your calendar again, you just click on the calendar button here and you're back in your calendar. So another really good example of how Google Calendar can work well in your business is by using the appointment schedule. So this creates a booking page for you to share or embed to make it easier for clients to book time with you. It works much the same way as Calendly. And this video takes you through how to set it up from start to finish. So go check it out.